But what I always say, if you can create photos like this, you're going to be guaranteed work because the realtor is not going to be able to do this stuff with their iPhone. At least not yet anyway, right? Let me take you in right now to Lightroom. We're going to edit an image. I'm going to show you how you can take what seems to be a difficult situation and turn it into an easy situation. Let's go. All right, so I'm just showing you this image in here to show you what is behind me. So I am going to be standing right over here at this corner of the dining room table and shooting this way, showing the kitchen. So this is my ambient layer. Got a lot of natural light coming in. We got the lights on. Now that's the one thing I've been shooting now. A lot of my homes with lights off when it, when it works. And remember, if you're going to be a lights off photographer, that's kind of the movement going on right now is lights off. Make sure that your real estate agent is okay with that. Some of them are just adamant about having every single light on in the home. And if that's what they want, then just shoot it that way and learn how to deal with that. So this is, again, like I said, the ambient layer. And this is my flash image. Beautiful. Turned out really nice. And that was with the shoot through umbrella. I have another tutorial where I show that trifold umbrella that can't compacts down into about you know 12 inches. This is the one I use for that with uh, standard uh, standard flash. You don't need a whole lot of power when you're using a shoot through umbrella because the light is going straight out into the room as opposed to bouncing the flash where the pa flash power has to go up and hit the ceiling and then spread out. You lose a lot of power from there to the ceiling. So just keep that in mind. If you want to run uh, your, if you're new to real estate photography, all you really need is a, a basic flash, and then get a shoot through umbrella and use that instead of the ceiling bounce. Something to think about. All right. So let's bring these two layers into Photoshop. All right. So once we have both layers into Photoshop, we got the ambient layer sitting on top and we have our flash image sitting on the bottom. So we're going to do, remember, make sure that top layer is highlighted. Click the mask and then command I to invert. And now we can make sure our brush is selected to white. Flow is at about 5% good size brush here and remember we're just going to brush back out those shadows that were created by the flash and it really is just a matter of getting rid of the shadows and remember that our kitchen lights were on they were pretty blown out so we don't want to make we don't want to bring too much of that ambient light back in but enough to make it well lit and make sure that ceiling has natural shadows because that's a highlight of this house is that nice wood ceiling, the brick wall there. Okay, I like that. Now, if you were looking at this, you're thinking, oh, that looks pretty good. But now I can tell that there's a lot of still yellow, orangish color cast to it. And here's a quick way that I have learned on how to um, correct for color casts and get really close to almost perfect white balance. So here you go. So what we're going to do is duplicate this layer, Command-J. Come up here to Filter, Blur, and then Average. So that, what that's going to do is just smear all the colors together and give you an average of what the entire image is. So typically what you want to have this is um, the average of RGB. If you have an even amount of RGB, no matter what the... Um, the amount is of each it's gonna be gray so what we're gonna do now is we gotta click this to get this to turn gray so we have to click down here right here at this uh, choose an adjustment layer here we're gonna go to curves and right here we're gonna choose this the middle eyedropper and then just click anywhere in the image see the difference now if we toggle off this first layer here and then come up to our curves adjustment layer and toggle that on. Look at that, how orangish and yellow that is. And then turn it back on. See how it got rid of all the, uh, the yellow color casts? And you can sometimes with this method, it pushes it too much. And you could always take the opacity and bring that opacity down a little bit. All right, so let's flatten this image. Command S to bring it back into Lightroom. And I'm just going to do my uh, interior final bump here. And look at that. Well, look at that. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? 
Just seriously, look at it. It looks beautiful. All right, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.